in, in the case of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, I've already indicated uh, that uh, he used marriages for political and social purposes, and, and you were interested in that. Mm -hmm. So if you're still interested, sure, go I ahead. will elaborate a little bit. So, uh, you know, as a Muslim, naturally, I want to defend the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, um, uh, and, and, you know, present him as uh, a good example for others and so on. But it's interesting that uh, some non-Muslim reviewers of the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, have pointed out that his marriages were largely for political and social purposes. Uh, these uh, writers include uh, John Esposito in his book, Islam, The Straight Path, and Karen Armstrong, his, uh, her biography of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, entitled Muhammad. Now, why did they reach this conclusion? Now, if we look at the uh, marriages of the Prophet, peace be upon him, we'll see that uh, um, uh, for the biographer, uh, biographical information about him shows that uh, he uh, was married for the first time when he was 25 years old. Uh, his wife at the time was said to be 40. The age might have been exaggerated, but nonetheless, this is how in the, it is in the biographical records. And uh, all the children he had was with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, he lived with her until she passed away. At that time, he was uh, about 50 years old. Uh, so for 25 years, he had only one wife. And uh, when she passed away, the Prophet, peace be upon him, had uh, daughters, young daughters like Fatima, and uh, she, he needed somebody to care for his daughters. So then he started to um, think about getting married again. And uh, he got married uh, to Sauda, um, who showed uh, potential for caring for uh, his uh, daughters. And he also got married to Aisha, who was young, um, and her age is uh, another subject of discussion. Mm -hmm. But uh, nonetheless, uh, her young age uh, meant that she uh, was able to transmit to us and to Muslims in general uh, much information about the domestic life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So whereas he was visible to all and sundry uh, out of doors, uh, what about his home life? How did the Prophet, peace be upon him, live at home and how can we copy his good example uh, as a homeowner and uh, a family man. Uh, much of that information came to us through Aisha radiallahu anha and by virtue of her young age because she was able to learn much and lived a long time to transmit that information uh, to Muslims eventually so that that information could be recorded in our classical texts. Uh, uh, Aisha was uh, the, the daughter of a close companion of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr had sacrificed much and bore much privation, uh, especially in the early days when people were being persecuted for the mere fact of being Muslim. Nowadays, we think it's not easy being Muslim, but it, and at that time, you know, being Muslim was even uh, more um, a, 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 a of peril to the person mm -hmm. because you could be killed, could be tortured, and so on. So Abu Bakr uh, needed to be rewarded in some way, and what better way to reward him than to get married to his daughter, so that his daughter becomes one of the what is referred to in our um, uh, traditions as Ummul Mu'minin, the, the mothers of the believers, Ummatul Mu'minin. So she was now um, Ummul Mu'minin, the mother of the believers, so we refer to her with that title of respect. She had been given this status, and by her being given that status, that would obviously be some consolation to her father who had sacrificed so much for the faith. Mm -hmm. Now, the Prophet, peace be upon him, married uh, another daughter of another companion, that was Omar, who uh, eventually became the second caliph, after Abu Bakr was the first caliph. And by marrying Hafsa, the daughter of Omar, the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was also showing his appreciation for Omar, who had sacrificed so much for the faith. And uh, uh, Hafsa, by this time, was also a widow. Uh, so what was to be done with the uh, widows at that time? The Quran, we've already indicated, encouraged the men to take on additional wives in order to care for the widows in that society and any orphan children along with them. So Hafsa was already a widow, and uh, men at the time desired to marry virgins. Uh, virginity was prized. Uh, so it uh, took an extra step for someone to decide to marry a widow. The Prophet, peace be upon him, married Hafsa, one would say as an act of compassion. And also it fulfilled the dual role of uh, being a political move to uh, further solidify his relationship with one of his close companions who was sacrificing a lot and defending the faith, uh, mm -hmm. Omar, mm -hmm. who became then the second uh, caliph. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, got uh, um, married to uh, Juwaria, uh, who was the daughter of the Banu Mustalik chief, and the Banu Mustalik people had come to um, fight with the Muslims, 
And when they were defeated in battle, their people were taken as captives. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, by marrying Juaria, now uh, made a a relationship with the people of Mm Juaria. And as a result, uh, the Muslims who had taken the Juaria's people as captives all decided to release the captives because they said, it's not right for us to hold the relatives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, as, as captives. So later on, uh, Aisha, uh, the mother of the believers, could remark that uh, she's never seen a woman bringing more good to her people than Juwaria did on the day when she got married to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, so we can see that her, this, this, her marriage to the Prophet, peace be upon him, was with a political motive in, in mind and, and a, social, a social one. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, similarly married uh, Sophia, your namesake, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, who was the daughter of a Jewish uh, a chief. And uh, when uh, she got married to the Prophet, peace be upon him, that established a closer relationship between the Muslims and the Jews at the time. Uh, so that Sophia could be uh, said to be like a sister of Aaron, um, you know, or um, family uh, of Aaron and, and, and Moses. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, um, uh, similarly married uh, other uh, wives for political and uh, social reasons. Umm Habiba uh, was one of his uh, early followers uh, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, was in Mecca, his birthplace. But the Prophet and other Muslims were driven out from, from his birthplace. Some had migrated to Abyssinia. The Prophet, peace be upon him, migrated to Medina. Uh, uh, Umm Habiba was one of those who had migrated to Abyssinia. But in the meantime, in Abyssinia, her husband died. And uh, Umm Habiba was left there as a woman far away from her home, disowned by her family. And uh, she was in a strange land. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, showed compassion by getting uh, married to her by proxy. And she moved to live with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in Medina. Mm-hmm. That, that was an astute political move because uh, Umm Habiba actually was the daughter of Abu Sufyan who was one of the chief opponents of the Prophet Muhammad, Mm -hmm. peace be upon him, and a leader of the Meccan people. Mm -hmm. So later on, uh, uh, Abu Sufyan softened his uh, stance against the Prophet and the Muslims as a result of this marriage. And uh, that paved the way for the Prophet, peace be upon him, to re-enter Mecca uh, victorious, taking over the city uh, so that Islam could be established there. And, uh, and normally that would only be, uh, be, be, be done with a lot of bloodshed, but the marriage of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to Umm Habiba averted all of that. So if we trace the marriages one by one and we continue, you will see that uh, all of them have some kind of political or social implication. And that's not to deny that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a human being. Muslims uh, admit that the Prophet was a human being like the, the rest of us, uh, having human desires and needs and so on um, but at the same time he used his um, you know his humanity uh, for the sake of good and um, his marriages uh, you know demonstrate that